Hey everyone, welcome back to Linear Algebra. This will be lecture 15 of the course. And in this section, we're going to define uh, the concept of span. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, we'll call this section 4.3 span. Okay, when we say we're going to st we're going to study or well define the concept of span, what that really means is we're going to be taking a closer look at the world of linear combinations. Okay, so we previously de defined what a linear combination is, but let's revisit that definition and extend it slightly. Okay, so definition. Um, let's let S be a non-empty, and I'm going to say possibly infinite. Okay, a non-empty, possibly infinite subset of a vector space V. Okay, so I've got some vector space V, and S is just some non-empty subset of V. Okay, so then a vector in V, well, a vector, we'll say V, little v in V, in the vector space, uh, is a finite linear combination. Okay, is a finite linear combination. That's what we're defining, a finite linear combination of vectors in S. Okay, if and only if there exists a finite subset, okay, and this is going to be v1 dot 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 vn of s, okay, so these are vectors in s, such that uh, v can be written as a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus dot 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 plus a n v n, where, of course, a1, a2, dot, 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 a n are real numbers. Okay. All right, so this is the idea, right? So S is a non-empty subset of a vector space V. Okay, now if your V is some vector in the vector space, then it's a linear combination of the vectors in S if and only if I can find some vectors V1 through Vn that are inside this subset and I can find some scalars, you know, real number scalars, such that V can be written as a linear combination like this. Okay. All right, so this, I mean, so we, we previously defined linear combinations, but this extends the concept of linear combination uh, somewhat to include the possibility of forming sums of scalar multiples from infinite as well as finite sets. Okay, sets being the key, right? We didn't really, we didn't really talk about uh, finite linear combinations inside of a vector space coming out of a particular subset. This is a simple extension of of the idea, right? To specify that the vectors uh, come out of the subset and that the, the, the linear combination can be finite, as we've written here, or possibly infinite. Okay. All right, but what we'll be interested in is the finite linear combinations, okay, for this, for this discussion. Okay, and so just a simple example, just to make sure we're clear on this. Okay, a simple example. Um, let's consider uh, the set S of vectors and I'll just write them 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, negative 2, 5. Okay, this is our, obviously, S is a subset of R3, right? Okay. Well, then the vector 1, negative 2, 2, 1, negative 2, negative 2, is going to be a linear combination of the vectors in S. OK. 
Okay, and why is that? Well, because it's possible for me to identify scalars a, b, and c such that a times this plus b times this plus c times this is equal to the given vector. In particular, I could say 1, negative 2, negative 2 is equal to 2 times 1, negative 1, 0 plus negative 1 times 1, 0, 2 plus 0 times 0, negative 2, 5. Okay. And so this vector here, uh, 1, negative 2, negative 2, is a linear combination of the vectors in S. Okay. All right, and so we can see also from this example that any vector that can be formed from a subset of S can be formed from all of S by using 0 as a scalar. All right, so in this case we use 0 as uh, the scalar for this third vector because it wasn't technically needed to form this vector. We could just use the first two vectors of s, right? The third one wasn't needed, but we could put that zero coefficient, or sorry, that zero scalar uh, on that vector uh, if we wanted to include it. Okay. Okay, so let's do another example. Let's say we let s equal just a single vector, 1, negative 2, 7. Uh, and this is obviously a subset of R3. Again. All right, now what are, what are the linear combinations of the vectors in S going to look like in this case? All right, well, the only linear combinations of S are basically scalar multiples of this singleton vector. Okay, so basically, basically uh, what, what we, we could say it's just going to be IE A times 1, negative 2, 7, where A is a real number. Right, so in the case of a single of a subset of you know that is a, just a singleton vectors, this makes sense. You know the, uh, the the collection of all linear combinations of the singleton vector is just going to be the scalar multiples of the vector. Okay, let's take another look. Let's take a look at something else here. So what about this example? Let's let S equal U2 or L2. Okay, now U2 here is the upper triangular 2x2 two two matrices, and L2 is the lower triangular 2x2 two two matrices. So let me write that down. U2 is the upper triangular 2x2s, two L2 is the lower triangular two by twos, okay? Um, and so these are obviously, each of these are, you know, U2 and L2 are each infinite subsets of M22, and so S itself, which is the union of these two sub, of these two types of matrices, is an infinite subset of M22. So S equal to U2 or L2, this is a subset of M22, right? These are just the two by two, matrices. Okay, so then let's let A equal 2, 3, negative 1, and 1 half. Okay, then A is a linear combination of the elements of S. It's a linear combination of the elements of S. Now, why is that? Well, I mean, if I, if I say that A is a linear combination of the elements of S, that means I need to be able to form A using a linear combination of either 
uh, an upper plus a lower or multiple uppers or multiple lowers, whatever the case may be. Um, but what we can see is that it's going to take one of each, isn't it? Because this is not an upper triangular, it's not a lower triangular. The only way to get to this is to use at least one of each. So in particular, we can see that a equal to 2, 3, negative 1, 1 half can be written as 1 half of 4, 6, 0, 1 plus negative 1 times 0, 0, 1, 0. Right now, this guy here, this is in U2, right? It's an upper triangular. And this one over here is a matrix in the lower triangular. Okay. So this is one way to write A as a linear combination of S, of elements of S. Okay. But there are obviously many other ways to do this. This isn't a unique way, there's many other ways to do this. Here's kind of a, a nice way to think about it. A is equal to 2, 3, negative 1, 1 half, uh, which it can be written as 2 times 1, 0, 0, 1, plus 3 times 0, 1, 0, 0, plus negative 1 times 0, 0, 1, 0, plus 1 half times 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. There are infinitely many ways to express A using the vectors of S. Right, now notice here, oh sorry, this should be 0, 0 here. Right, so notice this is in U2, this is also in U2, this is in L2, and this is in, well, actually, this is in U2 and it's in L2. And so is this one. This is in U2 and L2. Right, because if it's, you know, just on the diagonal, that means it's upper or lower, right? So, so this is clearly an upper, this is clearly in lower, these are in upper and lower. Okay. All right, so these are just motivating examples for the discussion of what is to be defined next, uh, the span. Okay, so let's jump into the span. Let's define what we mean by the span. And obviously the span is gonna rely heavily on this idea of linear combinations. Okay, and so here's the definition. Let's let S be a non-empty subset of a vector space V. Okay. Then the span of S in V is the set of all possible okay, finite linear combinations of the vectors in S. Okay. Okay, so this is the definition of the span of a subset S in V. So let S, if S is any non-empty subset of a vector space V, then the span of S, the span of the subset S, is going to be the set of all possible finite linear combinations of the vectors in S. Okay. So if it, if 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 you're a vector, then you can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S, then you're in the span of S. Okay. If you're a vector that somehow escapes being written as a finite linear combination of the vectors in S, then you are not in the span of S. Okay. All right. So it's, it's a seemingly simple idea, right? I've got a subset. Well, first of all, I've got a vector space V, and I've got some subset of V. And what I'm going to do with that subset is I'm going to take all the vectors in that subset, and I'm going to combine them in every possible way using you know, linear combinations. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to expand 
that out to, I'm going to expand my set out to include every vector that can be written as a linear combination of the vectors of S. And that is what I call the span of S. Right? You can think of it as a larger subset of the vector space V. Okay. All right, let's, do an, let's take a look at an example here. <clears throat> so let's go back to the example we had of S equaling U2 or L2. Okay, which is a subset of M22. Okay, so this is the collection of all matrix of all two by two matrices that are either upper triangular or lower triangular. Okay, um, then what follows here is actually that the span of this set, which we denote we denote span like this span, and then whatever the set is in parentheses here. So the span of this set is actually equal to M22. Okay, This set, if I take the set of all upper triangular matrices, two by two, and all lower two by two triangular matrices, then the span of that set is actually all two by two matrices. Right now, in some ways, this might be obvious, but uh, but in other ways, you know, to some people, it might might seem a little bit perplexing, right? But it on the obvious side, like okay, the span of S is equal to M twenty is equal to M two two because every two by two matrix can be written as a finite linear combination. can be written as a finite linear combination of upper and lower triangular matrices. Right, and then we already kind of saw how this works in the previous example. Right, the previous example, we sort of flushed this out. Right, if I have some two by two matrix A, B, C, D, then I can definitely write it as a linear combination of upper and lower triangular matrices just by using the following A times 1 0 0 0 plus B times 0 1 0 0 plus C times 0 0 1 0 plus D times 0 0 0 1. Right, and we saw that this one is in U2, this one is in L2, this guy and this guy are in both. Okay, and so here's a, a recipe for how to write any two by two matrix as a linear combination of, of, the, of the elements of S. Okay. <clears throat> right. So that's why we say that, hey, look, I can get any matrix in any two by two matrix can be written as a linear combination of these guys. And so that's why I say that the span is equal to M22. OK. All right. OK, so something to note here is that the span of S is a much larger set than S. So note the span of S is a much larger set than S is. Okay. Right, so the span of S contains, what does it contain? Well, obviously it contains U2 and L2, but what else does it contain? Well, everything else, actually, every other two by two matrix as well. So M22 minus, you know, U2 or L2, right? So this is everything else, basically. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so we've seen an example already where the span of a subset is equal to the whole vector space. And you get the whole vector space back when you consider the span of this subset. Right now, obviously, too, to point out that S is a proper subset of M22, right? It, it truly is a proper subset. It's maybe infinite, but 
Uh, there are certainly matri matrices that are in M22 that are not in S, right? And so S is a proper subset of M22, but the span of S is equal to M22. Okay, so just to make kind of plain what we just talked through, uh, in this case, S was equal to U2 or L2, and the vector space was M22, okay? Uh, and we, what we were able to see is that for any A in M22, for any A in M22, we can write M22 as a linear combination of vectors in S. Okay, right. and so that's why we are able to say that the span of S is equal to M22. Okay, and then and when this occurs, when a vector space is uh, equal to the span of some subset, we say that M22 in this case is spanned by S. Okay. So we say that M M22 is spanned by S. Okay. All right, so just some just some notation and terminology there. Okay. Um, and let's just extend while we're on this topic of of this of, of you know of spanning sets. Let's take a look at another example. Um, we can see that in a similar way, R3 is going to be spanned by the set S equal to I, J, K. Okay. Right. This is going to work almost exactly the same way. We can, you know, so R3 is the set of, of three vectors, of three component vectors, and it's spanned by S, where S is equal to the first, second, and third uh, uh, IJK vectors. Okay. And so we can see that R3 is spanned by this because if V is equal to any ABC vector in R3, then, I mean, we could easily write V using IJK, right? It's equal to I times 1, 0, 0 plus, or sorry, A times 1, 0, 0 plus B times 0, 1, 0 plus C times 0, 0, 1. All right, so here's another example where we found a small subset of R3 uh, that spans R3, right? This only has three vectors in it, but the span of this subset is equal to the entire space of R3. Um, what about this? What if I have a second subset where I have just I and J? Uh, does does S two span R three? No, S two does not span R three, right? Why is that? Well, um, let's think. S two here is basically the one zero zero vector and the zero one zero vector, right? Right, and so what is what if I all of the linear combinations of S two are going to produce a z coordinate that is zero, right? You can see that because there's no way for me to get my z coordinate off of zero because this is zero, that's zero, right? Any linear combination, if I multiply this times ten, it's ten zero zero, and if I multiply this times fifty, it's zero fifty zero. I can't make this not zero, 
right? So S2 does not span R3, but what, so what is S2? Well, S2 is the XY plane in R3. Right, so if you think about it like in geometric terms, maybe I've got my, my X, Y, and my Z. S2 is gonna get me every vector in the plane, X, Y plane, but I can't get off of the X, Y plane uh, with just these two vectors. I need a third vector where the Z component is non-zero in order for me to get off the X, Y plane. Right, and so uh, you know, basically the, the idea here is that we can we can see that S two is a subset of R three, uh, but when we remove just that z that k vector, um, we we are no longer able to span R three. Right, so S the span of of S two is not equal to R three. Okay. All right. Excellent, excellent, okay. So, in, I mean, in general, from these first couple of examples, in general, we can say that Rn is gonna be equal to the span of basically n vectors, like n, so E1, E2, dot, 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 En. All right, if I take these n vectors, then uh, the span of, of those n vectors is naturally going to be equal to Rn. Right? We just saw two examples of that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, perfect. So we've defined span. We've looked at a few examples of what the span, of, of how the span can fit into a larger vector space. Now let's go ahead and jump into the big theorem of, of the section, okay? And that's this guy. Okay, we're gonna let S be a non-empty subset of a vector space V, okay? Then there's four items. So first of all, S, the subset of V, is itself a subset of the span of S. That one's kind of easy to see, right? The span of S is obviously built on all the linear combinations of S, uh, and so obviously anything in S is gonna remain inside the span. Okay, we'll prove these in a moment though. Two, uh, the span, of a subset S in a vector space V is a subspace of V. That one's less easy, less obvious, at least in my opinion. That one's less obvious. So why should the set of all uh, linear combinations of a arbitrary set S uh, lead to a vector space? or well, a subspace of a, of a vector space V. Why should it, I mean, so basically the span of S is a vector space. Why is that? That doesn't seem like it should be obvious. And it doesn't matter what I choose for S, just so long as S is a non-empty subset of a vector space. You automatically get a subspace out of the span. Interesting. Okay, uh, the third item is if W is a subspace of V, Okay, if W is a subspace of V with S a subset of the subspace W, then the span of S is a subset of W. Okay, this one seems a little convoluted. We'll come back to this when we get to the proof. All right, we'll draw a picture to show why this is actually not as complicated as it seems. And then finally, the span of S is the smallest subspace of V containing S. Okay, 
So the span of S is going to be the smallest subspace of V containing S. So that's kind of a big statement, right? So if I have some arbitrary set of vectors S inside of a vector space V, and I want to know what the smallest subspace of V containing those vectors happens to be, well, I, I can rest assured that the span of S is, is the smallest. So that's interesting. OK, let's prove these. This will take a minute, but it'll be worth it. OK, we're just going to prove them one by one and in order. So item one, OK, so here we want to prove that S is a subset of the span. OK, now this one's fairly easy. Let's let W be a vector in S. Okay, so W is a vector in S. I, it's a it's a it's a vector in your in your subset S. Well, then we know that W is equal to one times W. Right, right. Uh, we know that's true, and so this is a sum of scalar multiples, right? sum of scalar multiples from the subset W of S, right? So if I think of S and I think of a, of a, of a subset of S being just this singleton vector W, then I what I can see is that the fact that W is in S and W is equal to 1 times W, I have created a sum of a scalar multiple from this subset. Okay, so then W must be in the span of S. Okay, it follows directly, right? So basically what have I done here? I've got W is in S, and I know that this is a linear combination of elements of S, and so W naturally is in the span of S. Okay, so very straightforward. Now, uh, you know, something that needs to be pointed out here is that I've chosen W arbitrarily, right? W is arbitrarily chosen from S, so this is going to hold for any W in S. Okay, maybe I'll write that down. Typically, when you see this kind of proof, you don't have to explicitly state this, but just the method of proof needs, you know, this may or may not be the first time you kind of come across a proof like this. So because W was chosen arbitrarily, from S, this holds for all W in S. Okay. okay, so that one is obvious. I thought that was kind of obvious. So W is a, if W is an element of S, then it's naturally going to be in the sub, or it's naturally going to be in the span of S. Okay, number two, what we need to show is that the span of S is a subspace of V. Okay, so this one is going to require a little more effort. Now, the span of S is <coughs> non-empty because S is non-empty, and we just showed by one that that uh, anything in S is in the span of S. So span of S is non-empty, and so what we need to show is that it's closed. Right, and specifically we need to show that it's closed under scalar multiplication and under vector addition. So let's start with scalar multiplication. Okay, we'll start with scalar multiplication. So let's go ahead and let V be a vector in the span of S. Okay, and we'll let C be a real number. Okay, so then what happens? Well. V, uh, if it's in the span of S, can be written as A1, V1, plus dot, 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 plus A, N, V, N. Right? It's going to be possible to write uh, V as a linear combination of V1 through V, N, where V1 through V, N are assumed to be vectors in S. Okay. Right? So this is just kind of the definition of the span so far. Okay. And so then, Let's consider C times V. Well, C times V would be equal to C times A1V1 
plus dot 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 plus a n v n. All right, that's just you know properties of scalar multiplication, no problem. And I can distribute the C, right? So this is going to be equal to C A one V one plus dot 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 plus C A N V N. Right? And these are all this is just a scalar times a scalar. Right? So I just get a new scalar, don't I? Right? So so obviously C times A1 is a scalar, it's a real number. C times A n is a scalar, it's a real number. V1 through V n, those are still just vectors in S, right? And so that means this guy here is in the span of S as well. Right? The only thing required for a vector to be in the span is that it can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors in S. Of all the vectors in, of any of the vectors in S, right? In this case, v1 through vn are taken to be vectors in S, and so I can see that multiplying by constant keeps me in the span of S. Okay, let's do a similar kind of demonstration for vector addition. Okay, so for vector addition, let's let u and v be in the span of s. Okay, so then what does that mean? Well, that means u can be written as a1 u1 plus dot 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 plus a k u k, right? Okay, right where u1 through u k are, you know, elements in S. Okay. Let me write that. U1, UK vectors are in S. And then V also similarly. Now I'm going to use a different notation here just to emphasize that U and V could come, they could em employ different vectors inside of S. They may not be the same vectors. Right, so I'm going to write it using you know, different notation altogether. I'm going to write B1, V1, plus dot 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 plus, uh, and maybe there are different number of vectors too, so BL, VL. But the key thing here to notice is that V1 dot 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 VL is also a subset of S, right? So the, the fact that I'm using different notation here for the vectors just means that you may rely on one part of S and V may rely on a totally separate part of S, right? But they both are coming out of S. That's the key. Okay, so there may be a misalignment of these vectors. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these and I'm going to join them together. Right, I'm going to think of an another set X, which is going to be the subset U1 through UK of vectors and I'm going to union that with this other subset of V vectors, V1 through VL. Okay, now this subset X is itself a subset of S, right? I've, I haven't, you know, I haven't gone outside of S yet, right? So recap, U and V are in the span of S. That means there's going to be some vectors U1 through UK in S that I can write U as a linear combination of. V in the span of S means there's going to be some vectors V1 through VL inside the set S that I can write, so such that I can write V as a linear combination of them. Now all I've done is say, hey, there's a lot of mismatch between these vectors, so let's get let's gather all the relevant vectors together into a subset X of S. Okay. Now I'm just going to rename, I'm going to rename the elements of X. Now, some, to some extent, this is arbitrary, but it just makes the reasoning a little bit clearer. I'm going to rename the elements of X. So X is going to be equal to, we'll say, W1, W2, right? These, again, are vectors, right? So U1, I'm going to call W1. U2, I'm going to call W2, da 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 And I'm going to go on like this until I get all of them, all the way through VL, renamed as W. Okay, and so this is going to be a subset of S. 
right? Obviously, if this is a subset of s. Well, this is the same vector, it's just a different name on them. This is going to be a subset of s as well. Okay. Okay. So this being the case, there are going to exist real numbers. C1 dot 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 CM and D1 dot 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 DM such that U uh, is equal to C1 W1 plus dot 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 plus CM WM and V is equal to D1 W1 plus dot 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 plus dm wm. Okay, so basically I'm gonna take the elements of my new set x and I'm just gonna, you know, re-express u using those elements. Right now it's important to note, right, notice uh, here uh, if ci equals, sorry, ai, so CI is going to equal AI, right? And in the original linear combination, the A's, right? So for you, I've re I've re-expressed, I've got new uh, new scalars, right? C, but they're going to be the same. So here I've got A1, U1, and here I've got C1, W1. So C1 is going to equal A1 if if what? If this W1 vector is the same as U. Right? And it's going to be zero otherwise, isn't it? So CI is going to equal AI if WI equals UI. And what's going to happen in the other case? Well, in the other case, CI is going to equal zero if WI is not in this set of original vectors that we chose, U1 dot 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 UK. And the same is going to be true of the values of di. di will equal bi if wi equals vi. And ci will equal 0 if wi is not in the set v1 through vl. Okay. <clears throat> right, so basically I'm going to have the, the same scalars as before as well. But in addition, I'll have a bunch of zero scalars, right, in these new combinations. All right, because some of the vectors that I'm using here for u, for example, some of these are vectors that are relevant only to v. And in those cases, I'll just make, I'll just make the scalars equal to zero. No problem. And all the vectors that are relevant to you originally are the same, so all the scalars will be the same. Right? So I've just renamed things. Okay. And so we can kind of sum all this up by saying the following. U plus V is going to be equal to the sum from I equals 1 to M of CI WI plus the sum from I equals M, I equals 1 to M of di wi okay which is equal to the sum from i equals 1 up to m of ci plus di because those are the scalars up front times wi okay and so u plus v is a linear combination so u plus v is a linear combination of the elements in X, which is a subset of S. Okay. Okay, and that's obviously going to imply that U plus V is in the span of S. Okay. So if you can be written as a linear combination of a subset of another set, then you're obviously in the span of the larger set. Okay, and then we've we've shown closure under scalar multiplication and under vector addition and so that means that the span of s is a subspace of v okay now item three 
let's rewrite it since it's been a minute. So if W is a subspace of V, if W is a subspace of V with S a subset of W, then the span of S must be a subset of W. Okay, now this one seems kind of wordy and difficult, but I think if we draw a picture, this will be really clear. And, it'll, and the picture can kind of serve as the proof. Okay, so let's start by drawing our vector space V. Okay, and so if W is a subspace of V, we can just kind of draw it in here underneath, right? So W is a subspace of V. Okay. <clears throat> Now S is some subset in W, so let's write, you know, some subset S. Okay, and so the conclusion is that the span of S is a subset of W, right? That it's going to look like this. Okay, so if we were to try to draw this same picture, right? So this is the span of S. If we were to draw, try to draw the same picture, but to say that the span of S is not a subset of W, let's see what it looks like. Let's see how let's see how weird it gets. It'll kind of create a little bit of a paradox here, kind of a proof by contradiction by just drawing the wrong picture. So I've got V, and let's say I draw my W in here, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because we're going to step outside of W. Right, so I've got my subspace W inside of my vector space V. This is fine. Now inside of W, I've got some subset S. Okay. Now let's imagine for a second that the span of S is not a subset of W. So what that means is that the span of S is going to somehow get outside of W. Does this work? Well, there's a couple, There's well, there's one really glaring problem with this, right? Now, if I'm a vector inside of S, then I'm also a vector inside of W. And so linear combinations are really just scalar multiplication and vector addition kind of combined. And we know that any vector inside of W that's subjected to, uh, you know, vector addition or scalar multiplication has to stay inside of W. So how in the world am I ever going to get over, over here? I can't get over here, can I? That would violate W's, W being a subspace. If I can start in S and somehow combine those vectors, two vectors, to get outside of S, then W couldn't have been a subspace to begin with. Right? So this can't happen. So what's what you're left with is the fact that the span of S has to remain inside of W. And that's fine. If I take a couple of vectors in S and I linear and I combine them. I can I can stretch outside of S. S is just a subset, but I'm not going to get outside of W because these vectors in S are also in W. So W has to contain the span. I can't get outside of W because W is a subspace, right? So W is closed, right? So okay, perfect, perfect, and that that kind of serves as the proof. Like we could probably write this up and be more rigorous about it and, and maybe you should pause the video and try to do that but I think just kind of seeing how this would violate uh, W being a subspace is enough to is enough to be convinced okay now let's take a look at the last section the last piece number four okay now what did number four say let's uh, let me review here okay so number four says that the span of S is the smallest subspace it's the smallest subspace of V containing S <laughs> do that again okay so the span of S is the smallest subspace of V containing S okay so to see this consider right so basically this just kind of this statement is really a recap of one two and three right so what did one and two show us okay one and two showed that the span of s 
is a subspace of V. containing s. Literally two showed that span of s is a subspace and one showed that uh, it contained s. And now what did three show? Well three showed that the span of s is the smallest such subspace It's the smallest su such subspace. And, and how so? Well, how did it show it? Because the span of S must be a subset <clears throat> of, and hence smaller than any other subspace of V that contains S. Right, so let me write this out. So number three showed that the span of S is the smallest such subspace because Right, because the span of S must be a subset, must be a subset of and hence smaller than any other subspace of V. Containing S. Right, so it goes back to this, this back to this picture. Right, so the span of S must be a subset of, and hence smaller than any other subspace of V that contains S. Right, so you could just imagine drawing another subspace in here between W and the span. Right, so if I start with my V, then I've got my W. Let's just say I've got another subspace that's inside of W, and we'll call that U, right? And there's a subset inside of U. Now, I can't get outside of U for the same reasons I couldn't get outside of W. So the span of S is stuck inside of whatever the smallest vector space containing S happens to be. It can't get larger. It can't, it can't grow beyond whatever the smallest vector space the subset happens to reside in, right? For the exact same reasons that we saw here. If I try to, if I, if I've, if my span escapes out of a vector space W, out of a subspace W, then I violated W being a subspace, right? Because elements of S happen to be inside of W, so it's closed, right? And so you can, you can see that this could go on indefinitely. I could just keep adding subspaces and more subspaces nested subspaces, and the smallest one that contains S uh, will also contain the span. And so that means the span will be the smallest subspace of V that contains the vectors of S. Okay, so that's kind of the proof. Again, you could write up this last item four here in a little more, with a little more rigor if you like, but I think the point is taken. Okay, excellent, excellent. Right, so very interesting, very interesting uh, structure that uh, spins up off of the idea of the span of a vector space. Or sorry, the span of a subset of a vector space. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the video here uh, and we'll have a part B uh, simply because the, I want to do a lot of examples now and I want to get into uh, another item related to span. So we're going to go ahead and have a part B to this section, to this uh, to this lecture. Okay, see you in a moment.